Hey, I'm here with Mark Etzminger. He's the Senior Director of Children's Ministries for the Sims of God, and he has been visiting us today from Springfield, Missouri. Mark, thanks for being with us. Absolutely. We thought while we had you here, we could just pick your brain about events. Sure. I know um, events are something on the minds of children's leaders all year long, and we want to find the best ways to do those. What are some ways that you found just to keep those events in focus? Because sometimes the event just overtakes us. Absolutely. Me. Yeah. You know, I think sometimes what ends up happening is we, we one, we can follow on tradition, and well, we've always done this event, we always need to do this event, whether yeah. it's on a holiday or just a, a traditional time that your church has done one. And so we do the event, and we can do it with a lot of excellence, but sometimes if we, if we don't remember what the purpose is, we end up doing an event, and in the end, we're frustrated with the results. So the most important thing that we do is we, we always have to start with a reminder or the asking the question of, why are we doing this event? Yeah. What's the purpose for this? And, and I don't know that there's a right or wrong answer, um, because every church is different. Obviously, one of the greatest purposes is to reach kids for Jesus Christ. Right. But if you have the purpose in focus and then you're centered on that, it helps you make a lot of the decisions that might you might otherwise not know how to make because you forget what the purpose is. So who do you ask that question to? You know, why are we going to do it? Is that do, does your lead pastor need to be on that from the beginning or is it just your team? You know, that's a great question. And, and there's a lot of models that are currently in use today. And one of them would be the children's pastor sets that vision and runs with it. Um, the, and I think that's OK, but I think it becomes more powerful when the, the church, as church leadership as a whole, is communicating about that event and they together in prayer decide on the purpose. Um, because sometimes, and most of the time, quite honestly, the lead pastor has a different perspective than the children's pastor does. And so if the leadership of the lead pastor, uh, the leadership team, the board, and whoever else is on, on board with that and they speak into it, sometimes you can take a good idea and you can have it become bigger than you ever imagined right. or dreamed. Yeah as long as you're able to keep on point and on purpose. Um, and quite honestly, sometimes that can be frustrating. Yeah. I mean, I'll be honest. For a children's pastor who says, this is my vision, my dream, and the lead pastor says, I think it should go a different way. Yeah. But I think it's what we have to do because yeah. we have to be on the same team. That's right. So you're asking a question, why are we doing this event? Mm -hmm. Say you get that narrowed down. We know why we're doing it. What okay. are some other questions to help just keep that event aligned to the purpose of the, the why? Sure. Um, you know, other questions of the why, um, there's a variety of them that you could be asking, but um, I think you have to look at the year as a whole mm -hmm. and start saying, you know, where are we winning children? Where are we discipling children? Uh, where are we allowing children to be used in, in ministry in different ways? And sometimes those are big events. Sometimes those are weekly things. But I think you need to have a balance uh, across the board, at least on an annual basis, if not more frequently, where you're hitting multiple of those. Right. And so you, it's very easy to fall into a rut and become very strong or over or, or heavy in one area and very weak in another. Right. So the why kind of takes shape when you're looking at the whole scope of your mm -hmm. ministry. It's not just an event by itself. Um, what are some, you know, what are some dynamics when you look, when you can, when people talk about, you know, I'm going to put a whole scope together for the year for our events. What are some types of events that would help people answer that why that they should be touching bases on? I mean, you mentioned sure. a few just real briefly. What are some? Um, what, what types of events? I think, you know, a great one and, and one that everybody has to do is a camp. Um, you've got to get your kids away from technology, away from their current routine. You've got to get them into an environment where leaders are not distracted and focused on them. And it's a spiritual environment where everything points to those evening services and God moving in their life. Yeah, yeah. And that's a huge one because, I mean, a week's worth of camp is almost as impacting as an entire year worth of kids' church. Yeah. I and mean, when we talk hours of impact, it's huge. Yeah. So camp is big. Um, I like the big events where you bring all the kids together and it kind of feels like a, um, a concert or a celebration um, because that's an, an, a, an easy way to invite a friend who doesn't know Jesus, uh, who may not otherwise come to your church to come on a different time and really be a part of something fun, exciting and mm -hmm. introduce them to Jesus there. Yeah, yeah. So there's a couple of examples uh, on smaller scales. You can take them and, and uh, involve them in, in outreach, whether it's raking leaves or baking cookies for shut-ins or walking through, uh, you know, retirement homes and singing Christmas carols. Right. You know, those are all different events that accomplish different things. And I think it's also important to consider what are some events we can do that bring in the whole family where right. mom and dad sit together with their kids 
not check them in and leave, but we sit together and together we learn. Disney does this. It's doable. Yeah. It just takes work and it takes energy. Is it okay for an event to be so specifically targeted just at socializing? I mean, sometimes we feel like we do a church event, we have to have an altar call or take an offering. Is it okay just to get together to hang out or to have no other intention yeah. other than just being social? Again, that's the, that's the whole balance thing. Um, because I think you can over overdo it on that social aspect, and that's all you do. Right. Um, but sometimes that's the the hook or the draw to connect with people. Um, but again, when you when you do those events that are social, make them fun and easy for your kids to invite their friends to. Um, and again, what's the purpose? Is the purpose just social, or is the purpose to say it's a chance for our leaders to connect with the friends? of those who wouldn't normally come. Yeah. Well, you're defining something from, well, this is social, and you're pinpointing it because when you say, I want leaders to be able to connect, that says, I've got to program this in a way to provide the time right. to yeah. do that. Yeah. That's so cool. even within that big scope, you can you can laser focus it. That's cool. Cool. Well, lots to consider about clarifying and aligning our, aligning our events to make sure that they're being... A great asset to your <laughs> Done yeah. intentional. That's cool. Uh, Mark, if people want to follow you and keep track with what you're up to, is there a, a way that they can do that? They can do that. Um, I don't know that my life's very very interesting and exciting, <laughs> but if you want to, uh, I'm on uh, Twitter at Mark Insminger. I guess it's at Mark Insminger. I'm also on Instagram, and so if you want to find out what I'm having for lunch or uh, those different kinds of things, you can check that out. Always well. important. Cool. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's a show and tell for grown-ups. That's right. Cool. Thanks, Mark. You bet. We'll see you guys next time.